Today we're going to continue on our book, a concise presentation of the book. Today is the 24th of April, 2024, and the night of the 17th of Shawwal, 1445. It is episode 73 of the class, and we're currently on the categories of interest. For those on the book, it is page 472. And just before we start, we'd like to recommend that brothers come forward. That my classes has to be with everybody forward. Closer, Khani. Well, closer. I, I'm, I don't I think I'm, I'm spending okay, am I? I don't know if you're going further away from me. Khani, <laughs> get closer, get closer. That's a sunnah. Scattered is not from the sunnah. Zakallah. Fadal. So, a riba, and we are on to the aqsam, types of riba. Correct. Fadal. It's categories. Interest is divided into two categories, riba and nasi'ah. Is that correct? Nasi'a. Nasi'a and uh, riba al Riba and nasi'a is a stipulated increase in payments received by the creditor from the debtor due to delaying the payment. This type of interest is forbidden by the Quran, Sunnah, and consensus of the nation. Riba al fadl is where money is exchanged for money or food for food in a spot transaction but with unequal values. This is forbidden by the Sunnah and consensus, as it is a means that may lead to riba and nasi'ah. Right. First of all, two types of riba are haram. But he distinguished between this is prohibited by the Quran, the Sunnah, and the Ijma al Ummah, which is the consensus. The other one is by the Sunnah and the Ijma. Well, the Sunnah or the Quran is the same in terms of, or equal in terms of prohibition, because the Prophet of Allah he said, what I make haram is just like what Allah made haram. What I make haram is just like what Allah made haram because the Prophet of Allah is inspired by Allah. He does not speak from his whims and desire. These two types of riba, one of them called, they called it riba nasi'ah. And this is the, we call it in Arabic, riba jali. Clear. Everybody knows it. Give me, five, give me 500. Okay. Return it back 600. Clear. Give me a great credit, me for 1,000, one year, uh, give it back 1,200. See, everybody knows riba because you are taking money extra on loans. And that is called riba nasiya. That's clear. The other one is riba khafi. It is hidden. And that's why it's called riba al-fadl. Fadl, yeah, the extra, which is money with money. And then there is a difference in the quantity. Food with the food, as we're going to see. And is it with particular food or with all types of food, as we're going to see as well, inshallah. Right, so let's just now go to the uh, riba, which is uh, a, a riba that will, or the, the riba that which type of items that the riba takes place in? Other. The types of wealth in which riba occurs. Riba only occurs with respect to the six categories of wealth that are explicitly stated in the following hadith. Uh, ibn Samit, the risk of Muslim, Allah, so Allah, so Allah. Gold exchanged for gold, silver for silver, wheat for wheat, barley for barley, dates for dates, and salt for salt must be for the same amount, equivalent and hand to hand. If these commodities vary, then sell them in any way you wish as long as it is hand to hand. Right, let me explain. Now, he's talking about which type of riba and the sea or the fadl. The fadl, I'm not talking about riba nasiya. Riba and nasiya is clear that I lend you something and then you get me back something extra. Okay, so it's called riba and nasiya. But riba al fadl, which is the, when we exchange an item with an item and the riba takes place, he said that the Prophet of Allah, he said, those items, he mentioned them, he didn't say this is these are only items, but he had mentioned a number of hadith that these are the items. Gold for gold, silver with silver, wheat with wheat, barley with barley, date with date, salt with salt. Mithlam bi mithil, equal weight to equal weight, equal measurement to equal measurement. Yadan bi yad, hand to hand, that means on the spot. If those items they differ, then, for example, gold to silver or barley to wheat, or date to salt, 
then doesn't matter the quantity, but it has to be on the spot. Let's just go further to explain. If items of the same genus are being exchanged, same, so same what? Genus, so the same type. Basically. Same type. I mean, such as gold for gold or dates for dates, it is forbidden to increase any of them or to pay for them over time. They must be equivalent in weight or amount, regardless of any differences in quality, good or bad. Furthermore, one must take possession of it in the same setting. So, he's saying here, and then this hadith tells us, if you're selling gold with gold, so I've got five grams of 24 carats of gold. And I want to buy, okay, Gold of 18 carats, which is more expensive in the market, 24 carats or the 18 carats? There's not even comparison. 24 is much higher than the 18 carats. Now, so I want to make this transaction halal. I want to purchase with my five grams of 24 carats of gold, gold from the category of 18 carats. How can I make it halal? Put your finger off your mouth. How can we get halal? Huh? Price. No, no, I want to exchange gold for the gold. I want to, you got some gold, which is 18 carats. And I've got five grams of 24 carats of gold. In order to purchase from you that gold, what do I need to make it halal? First of all, let me just make it on the spot. I mean tit for tat. Now I give it to you, then later on tomorrow I'll give you. Okay, so it has to be yadam yad, tit for tat. Do you understand that? But what is the quantity here that I need to take to make it halal? Say, five grams to five grams. If you make it six grams or 20 grams, it's riba. You might say, well, this is the price, this is much higher. If I'm, I'm going to purchase with the price of the 24 carats of five grams, I'll purchase 50 grams of 18 carats. Well, go and sell it and get money and buy the 18 carats of gold. But if you want to swap like this, it has to be what? Five grams or five grams? Is that understood? And it has to be what? On the spot. Meaning, I go to the goldsmith. I want to exchange my 24 carats to 15 carats. Goldsmith, I've got five grams. He must give me five grams. Exactly. If I want to sell it something else, how much it's worth in money, and then I will buy it as something else. But I'm swapping five grams. Okay, I gave him, and he's going to give me the five grams, okay, uh, of the 15 carats, 18 carats. So I put it in my pocket. He asked me, what is my five grams of the 24 carats? Hang on a second. Let me go and get it from the car. Haram. It has to be what? Straight away. Put it back. Bring it. Swapped at the same time. What's so special about this? Within that time, gold price can change. Allahu Anam was going to happen. So that's why it's had to be. So that makes it tight. No deceptions. No gharar. Gharar means that something which is the, the risk is too much. Five grams to five grams. Right. So that's how I make it halal. Otherwise, as I said, if you want to buy more. Same thing here. The currency. The notes, your pounds, your money. If I want to purchase gold, okay, because it is based upon gold. The scholars, they said that this currency of yours is based upon what? Upon gold. How much is the gold is worth? That's why we met, work out the, the, the zakah on the gold, isn't it? The threshold, remember when we talked about zakah, the threshold is 85 grams of 25 to 4 carats of gold, not silver. Because if you made it the silver, ah, is it going to be not good? But it's not going to be just for the uh, for the rich person. Because everybody will be rich. Uh, everybody will be rich. Silver is cheap. So it has to be the gold. So if I want to buy with my notes some gold, again, I have to buy it. Boom, boom. Give the money, take the gold. I can't just go and say to him, give me the gold, let me get the money from the car. No. Something that might happen to the what? The price of the gold. So yeah, then we have now. He says as well, food to food. So I've got now the dates, which is majul. Huh? Majul, people like it. I don't like it, but it's very expensive. 
Let me have a lack of, lack of, lack of curry. I think this is just uh, show, show wise. But anyway, I'm not here to give uh, advertisement for soup curry or something. But let's say this is the most expensive type of dates, which is what? The majul. I've got here one kilo of majul. And it's worth five kilos of soup curry. For the sake of just five kilos of soup curry date. Right, so I'm gonna now, you've got the five kilos of soup curry and I've got one kilo of majul date. And I'm gonna purchase date from him. To make it halal, what should I do, Yaz? One for one. One for one. I give him one majul, he gives me one soup curry. And then what? Say second condition? You have to do it there and then. Say it there and at the same time. Swap, swap. Okay. Well, my one kilo worth is much more than five kilos of sukkari. Sell your dates and money. Bring the money and purchase whatever you like from the sukkari dates. Okay? But swapping like this, one kilo for one kilo. Regardless of bad quality, class A, class B, class C, well, we don't care. Dates for dates. Right. Further. Now we have, we're going to differ now. So what about if I'm buying dates with barley, dates with raisins, gold with silver? You know, there's a difference now. What's going to happen? Fadal. Fadal, Fadal, just read it. I'm going to say to read, just read. Said, do, not, do not sell gold for gold unless equivalent in weight, and do not sell a lesser amount for a greater amount or vice versa. Do not sell silver for silver unless equivalent in weight, and do not sell a lesser amount for a greater amount or vice versa. And do not sell gold or silver that is not present at the moment of exchange for gold or silver that is present. Umar ibn al-Khattab narrated the Nation of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the selling of gold for gold is interest unless it is done by hand to hand, unless it is done hand to hand. The selling of wheat for wheat is interest unless it is done hand to hand. The selling of barley for barley is interest unless it is done hand to hand. The selling of dates for dates is interest unless unless it is done hand to hand. So all of this is emphasizing what we have been saying. Go ahead. Abu Sa'id said, we were provided with dates during the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the dates were of different qualities together. We used to we used to sell two uh, handful sa'a or handfuls for one sa'a uh, of a different quality. Mm -hmm. to, 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 to sell two sars for one sar, not two handful. Two sar for one sar. It's no handful. When that reached the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, do not exchange two sar of dates for one sar of dates, or two sar of wheat for one sar of wheat, or two gold coins for one gold coin. Not two silver coins. Two ones. It doesn't matter, but silver coins. It's not the gold. The ram is silver. So silver coin. That's a translation. Go ahead. Now, if... If one wants, if one wants to exchange one commodity for another of a different type, such as gold for silver or barley for wheat, this is permissible as long as the exchange takes place at once. So, what is the hadith? This principle is based on the hadith of Ubadah quoted earlier. If these commodities vary, then sell them in any way you wish, as long as it is hand to hand. And also, it is also based on the hadith of Ubadah reported by Abu Dawood and others. There is no harm in trading hand to hand, gold for silver, and the silver is more. However, over time it is not allowed. And there is no harm in trading hand to hand, barley for wheat, and the wheat is more. However, over time it is not allowed. Thus, the, the wheat is more? Yes. So barley for wheat and the wheat is more. How can it how can it be? How can which one is more expensive? The wheat or the barley? I don't I don't buy wheat. Or barley. Who, who can understand? Which one is cheaper? Barley, we give it to animals, if one. Some of the countries, we give it to the donkeys and... Yeah, to the animals. Barley is not really, you know, the barley is sha'ir. It's cheaper, of course. So, the, by the way, the hadith is wrong, the translation is wrong. And the barley is... Which is the one is extra. It's not the, so, I'll give you the hadith again. Um, and there is no harm in trading hand-to-hand -hand gold for silver, and silver is more. Silver is because cheaper, silver is more. Uh, and there is no harm in trading hand to hand barley for wheat, and the barley is more because the barley is cheaper. However, over time, it's not allowed. Okay, right. So now, so if we are staying with uh, with the same reason, the same reason why the riba is there, but different types, there is no problem. The quantity changes. So we've got the money 
currency, gold and silver on one side, because it's got the same reason. And you've got the food, which has got the same reason. But they're different type of selling now, we're buying gold to silver, or putting silver with gold. Here, as long as it is done at the same time, there's no harm. You are making five grams of 24 carats of gold to 200 grams of silver, no problem. Because it's not gold to gold, it's gold to silver. So I'm purchasing with five gram or one gram, 24 gold, 100 gram of silver, no problem. As long as it's at the same time. Same thing here, if I'm doing, which is food wise, if I'm one kilogram of date, I want to buy, for example, raisins, half a kilo or two kilos or three kilos. It doesn't matter now, the quantity differ because the types are different. But, the same, but as long as it is at the same time. Right, go ahead. Thus, if one trades any of these six commodities for- No, no there's no thus here. And if- And if- Because uh, this is thus, the music, this is wrong. And if, you have to change it because it doesn't, it doesn't make sense then. And if- And if one trades any of these six commodities for another of the six commodities, which has a different purpose to it. Different purpose to it as well, yes. Such as gold for barley or silver for salt. Then it is allowed for the quantities to differ as well as for the payments to be made over time. So I'm buying with my gold, not silver, not currency. I'm buying food. So there's no problem now, anything that we want. So I could buy for one kilo of gold, 5,000 kilos of dates, for example. And I could defer the payment. So I'll, I'll give you the gold, Akhi, and you give me the food later on. Do you understand me? Or you give me the food now, and I give you the money in about one month. No problem. So when you change the purpose and the type, there's no problem to do what you like here. Quantity-wise and time-wise. Okay? Right. Father. Aisha radiallahu anha narrated the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bought food stuff from a Jew on credit and he gave him his shield as collateral. Right, so he bought the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam food and he was barley from Jewish for a time. So he bought with what? Money. But he had made his shield to be pawned. You know, every time I look at this hadith, I, I can't really stop just thinking about it. So amazing. This Jewish person, he lives on the outskirts of the Medina. And this had happened just before the death of the Prophet. And the Prophet of Allah, he's the head of the state, remember? Yet he hasn't got that much money to go and purchase some barley, cheapest food. Because when the Prophet died, she, Aisha was looking, so only there's a bit of barley left on the shelf. That's her food, you know. That is like, that's the thing that he left. So what amazes me that it was before the death of the Prophet of Allah. That means the Prophet of Allah, he was now in control of Mecca, Medina, and Al-Ta'if, and, and most of the Arabian Peninsula is under his control. So he is, you know, is in control of everything. So this Jewish person, he lives under the umbrella of the Islamic empire at that time. And the head of the empire, the emperor, is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Yet, he is purchasing from this Jewish person, barley, which was, it was 60 sa, okay? For the sake of, that is his food, and he's giving his shield to be pwned. That means his shield costs a lot of money. It's like a, a weapon. So until he pays the money in full, then the Jewish person will give him the shield. Have you, have you thought about it? This is the Jewish person who is not in control, living amongst the Muslims, yet he has the audacity and the power to say to the president, I don't trust you. I'm not going to give you the food until what? You give me the, sh the shield as pwned. Once you pay me back, then I'll give you the shield. You're talking to the president. It shows how justice is the Islam that gave this power to this Jewish person do what he's doing. Because that guy, if he thought that this country or this em empire is not just, he would have said, you take the food 
and do what you like and give me the money later on. Trona, be scared. He's the head of the country amongst the Muslims. And by the way, all the Jews, most of them, they left to Haibar. And most of them, so that in the Medina, there's very, very few left. Yet he's got the power because he could see that the justice, that even as a Jewish, he could say his word. Against what? The president. Okay, you want to borrow? Give me the shield. The Prophet of Allah never said to him, I'm the head of the country. I'm the messenger of Allah. Can't you trust me? He never said that to him. Okay. Take it until I pay money. And he died, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he did not pay back. And later on, he's been paid back to him. But he's been died, and the shield is still being owned by the Jewish person. If you look at this hadith, it makes you subhanAllah. Wonder. That's why the Islam is the most just because it's the religion that Allah wanted it for us. Submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had purchased a food with his money, with his gold, with deferring the quantity wise, because he gave him less than what he's going to give, take from the sahab, because the barley is much cheaper than the silver itself or the gold. And also time wise, he deferred the payments, no problem. Okay, you understood now. Fadal, now say to us what Amir al Ali had said. Um, he said, he, he wrote in Surah Al Salam, you should realize that the scholars agree that it is allowed to sell, it is allowed to sell one riba commodity for another riba commodity that does not share its same quality over time and with an increase in the amount, such as buying wheat with gold or, gold or barley with silver and others of the weighed items. Oh. It is not permissible to sell fresh dates with dry dates, except for uh, al -araya, al -araya. Uh, which refers to the poor who do not have date palms. They are allowed to sell the fresh dates on the trees in exchange for its estimated amount of dried dates. Abdullah ibn Umar narrated the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, hang on a second before Abdullah know. There's an addition here we have to add it as well. Right, so... Uh, we know now we're not allowed now to do this food we had mentioned here barley, wheat, date, and silver. Oh, sorry, uh, salt. Those are the items mentioned in the food, isn't it? So, what about other types of food? Is it included? Many scholars they said no, it's only those. So, for example, if I'm changing cucumber to cucumber, I know probably my cucumber is better than yours. Give me two cucumbers, okay, uh, for this cucumber. Uh, so, no problem. Some scholars say, no problem. Kiwi for kiwi fruit, uh, oh, mango to mango. My mango is Pakistani, nicer. Your mango is Africano, is no good. Okay, so give me one, five mangoes of Pakistani to one mango Africano. Okay, that is, uh, scholars, they said, no problem. Some of the scholars, like our Sheikh Al-Bani says, no, because the hadith says also, wal kailu wal was. The Prophet Sallam, he said, on top of that hadith, he said, and anything that can be weighed or can be measured volume wise, al kailu wal was. Because of this, we have a difference among the scholars. So to be on the safe side, I would exchange one cucumber to one cucumber. But one cucumber to kiwi, as he could say, I want. Okay, two cucumbers for one kiwi, because my kiwi is expensive. No problem. But one kiwi to one kiwi. Two kiwis to two kiwis, regardless of the shape. Of one mango Pakistani to one mango Africa. To be on the safe side. Now, type. Now, coming to the hadith, which is talks about the araya. Araya is palm trees, which is offered to the poor people. Not the land, just the palm tree. And those offered to the poor people by the rich person. Just take it. Whatever it comes, what is the product of it is yours. So these palm trees, they need to be looked after sometimes. And those poor people, sometimes they want the food straight away. But it hasn't been ripened. And you remember that it is not allowed to sell, if you remember, unripened food. Remember that one of the three prohibited transaction, because we don't know. She should just sell something that is still flour. We don't know it's going to be getting the fruit. How can I just sell it and buy it? So Allah Azza wa Jal, he might damage it before it is due, before it's ripened. So here, Allah's messenger, 
which is divine, had allowed for those poor people to sell what is in top of the tree from the dates, which hasn't been collected, which is not maybe ripened, okay, to something which is on the ground by something called khars. Khars means estimation. And this is for an expert. Will come, yes, your tree will make about 20 kilos. Okay, so those, because of these people are poor and they can't wait until the season uh, is finished and then they could harvest, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it possible for them through the Prophet sallam, to go and sell that for ready dates on the ground, just for those called al araya but there is a restriction here, the hadith which is not being added there. And the restriction is as long as it is less than five awsuq. Each wisq is 60 sa. So you're talking about 300 sa. What is the sa? Sa is about two and a half kilos. So as long as it is what? Five awsuq. Five awsuq, it is. Okay, six, three hundred multiplied by two and a half is about 800 kilos. Yes, 800 kilos. Right, so about 800 kilos. Because we don't want as well, maybe the poor people get lots of maraya, lots of rich people, and they start now making a trade with it. This is just, you know, for them, as long as each person can do that for five also or less, not more than that. And that's the hadith. Abdullah ibn Umar. He narrated the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade al muzabina which is where fresh dates in the trees are sold against dry dates. He also forbade selling grapes against raisins for an estimated weight. Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu also, also stated that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave an exemption for the araya to buy fresh dates according to an estimate of their weight. Okay. But there is a hadith which is not being mentioned here, which is hadith Abi Sufyan. On the first of Abu Hurairah, the Prophet he said that he had made it permissible, he gave the concession for the araya to be sold in five awsuq or less. So that's the one hadith is to be added. Yes, the Prophet he prohibited. The Prophet forbade the sale of fresh fruits or dried fruits because the fruits lose weight when they, when they are dried. You know, the fresh... The, the fresh and moist. It's got more weight than the one. The, the, the dry ones. Now. Nah. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, the uh, of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was asked about selling fresh fruit in exchange for dried, and he said, does the quantity of the fresh decrease when it is dried? The people answered yes, so he prohibited them that action. It is not allowed to exchange a interest commodity with its own genus, with its own type, two of them together, or with one of the other categories. Thawala uh, ibn Ubaid said... So it is not permissible to own, buy or sell. What? A, a riba commodity. Which is like we talked about the gold and silver. With its own type, two of them together, or with one of the other categories. Um, it, to, buy, to, to, this, to, to buy with, like for example, you have gold and you have with it inside that gold, let's say silver. They have a ring which has got gold and got silver with it. You understand me? I want to sell it. So, you, you know, sometimes you find a gold ring and it's got like a pearl in it. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So it's not allowed to sell it like this. It has to be what? Dismantle to see what is the weight of the gold. Hold on. Um, he said, I bought a necklace on the day of Ayman. For 12 dinars, it was made of gold and pearls. I separated the gold from the gems and found it to be more than 12 dinars. I mentioned that to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, it should not be sold until its gold and gems have been separated. Okay, it has to be separated in order to sell. You can't sell it just like, oh, well, it looks nice, gold is worth 500. But what are you selling me? The gold or the pearl or the gold and the pearl together? Has to be separate. So the gold has to be known how much it is. That's what he means by that. My dear, so alhamdulillah, we come to the end of the commodities and the riba in these commodities. Okay. Now, just to add to this, also the Prophet forbade buying, for example, uh, meat 
with a sheep, it means dead to alive. So you go to a farmer of a sheep and you say, okay, I've got 20 kilos of, of meat being cut. I'm going to give it to you, but I want a live sheep. Do you understand me? Or vice versa. I'm going to give you this sheep and give me, you got as a butcher, I'm going to give you the sheep and give, you, give me the meat that you've got. Give me about 55, 15 kilos of meat. Because it's almost maybe 15 kilos that are going to make this sheep. It's not allowed. Okay? So it's not allowed to, to sell or buy dead to a lie. I'm not allowed. I have to, to sell the meat or to sell the sheep and purchase, you know, just like we did with the gold and the gold, gold and the silver, gold and the gold. So can't buy the meat, which is to a meat, but one is a little dead and one of them is alive. Is that understood for you guys? Yes? Right. Now, am I allowed to buy one sheep to two sheep? Okay. The Prophet Sallam had gained concession for that. Like a big ram, I could really sell it for two sheep. No problem. As long as they are alive, alive, not dead and alive. Alive and alive. Two big ram, two sheep, or three sheep, or four sheep, whatever. It is allowed. Now we come into something called al muzara. Now, if you are on a farmer, you're going to be maybe struggling to, I wouldn't say understand it, but it's not going to be as exciting as for the farmer himself. What is the muzara? Sharecropping. Sharecropping. So it lexically refers to working a field in exchange for a portion of its produce. Specifically, here it refers to a person giving a piece of land to another for him to farm it on the condition that he will get half or some other amount of its produce. So I'm giving you the land, I'm the owner, and you're the farmer, and I will, for example, uh, uh, give you, uh, make the contract between me and you, that I give whatever you, you know, farm into it, you know, uh, sorry, plant into it, and the produce is 50-50%, or 60-40, or 20 and 80, doesn't matter. As long as we want set, the percentage, it doesn't have to be 50-50. Right, so what is this halal or haram? It's legality. Nahir narrated that Abdullah ibn Umar informed him that the Prophet ﷺ had the people of Khaybar work the field with each getting half of the produce. Bukhari stated in his Sahih. The people of Khaybar were Jews. And when the Prophet ﷺ had made Khaybar under his control, so he, Prophet was going to make, you know, he wanted to take the land and, and put uh, food there. He said to them, well, because they are good, okay, so they are good in plantation, they were good farmers, the Jews. They said to the Prophet, we will, you know, we will deal with the trees and everything, and then we will give you half the product. We take half. Prophet Solomon accepted. Now, Bukhari stated in his Sahih that. Qais ibn Muslim narrated that Abu Ja'far said, all of the emigrants in Medina used to cultivate the land of the Ansar for a third or fourth of the yield. For a third or fourth of the yield. Ali, Sa'ad ibn Malik, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, and Qasim, Urwa, the family of Abu Bakr, the family of Umar, the family of Ali, and Ibn Sirin all did share cropping. Right. Let me just hear first. Uh, make you to understand what is the Muzara. I should have the author started with as follows. We have a prohibition for share cropping. Prophet Sallam, he had prohibited share cropping and he had commanded with and he had prompted us to go to what was called hiring or renting. So here when we say commanding the hiring or the renting, that means it's permissible to do so. The scholars had differed regarding the prohibition of the share cropping here. Is it that the prohibition is the dislike, the abomination? Is it abomination? It means dislike. Or it was just at the beginning and then later became halal. Or it is prohibited upon just the rich people to do so. Or the last interpretation, which is that the prohibition was for the tribe of share cropping that was taking place at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in which the risk was a lot. There's a error into it. 
So this is the, the, the proper interpretation. It's not a dislike, it is not for the rich people, and it is not the beginning and the little abrogated. What was the case at the time of the Jahili? The time of the Jahili, what happens is that I got the land and this person is a farmer. So we'll make the contract as follows, which is the haram one. Okay, you plant it, I'll take the produce of what is in the eastern side of the land. And you take the produce of the western side of the land. Do you understand me? So we divide the land. So you, on this side, whatever comes out is mine. And this side, whatever comes out is yours. It's haram. Do you know why? Because the haram, the risk. Maybe that one will bring a lot. And this guy who had worked, he'll get nothing. Or he will get a lot and I will get almost nothing. That's risk. So that's why it's haram. Or I would say to him, to the farmer, whatever is next to the river is mine. And whatever is away from the river is yours. It's not a land. But if we share the land, all of it together, and we give a percentage, regardless, I'm going to say to the farmer, Achy, my land is good. If you want to have it, I get you, give you 5%. That's it. You do everything 5% of the problem. If you accept, no problem. There's no haram, there's no risk here. You know, this is a 5% out of the produce of this land, or vice versa. Because he's a good farmer, well known. For example, I give, I, I give you 90%, then I've got to 10% the, the owner of the land, because I'm making money. I was, my land was doing nothing now. This farmer is going to turn my desert land into a, a good land. So I'll give him, for example, 90%, no problem. But to say that the eastern side and the western side, the higher side, the lower side, the one which is next to the valley, the one who's not next to the valley, that division makes a risk. Because we don't know. You could be a winner, you could be a loser. What is that one? There's no winner or loser. What is that? A, a, a con agreement here. An agreement between me and the person who's share cropping, the one who's planting my land. Uh, so, Fadda. Who supplies the capital needs? There is no harm if the owner of the land, the sharecropper, or both of them provide the capital needs. Bukhari states in his Sahih, Omar would make an agreement with the people that if he provided the seeds, he would get one half of the yield. If they provided the seeds, they would receive such and such amount of the yield. So it's according to the agreement. So he will farm. Who's going to bring me the seeds? We will say, you bring the seeds. Okay. If you bring the seeds, well, I'll give you 50%. If I bring the seeds, I'm going to get 70%. For example, as long as we agree. Now, Al Hassan said, there is no harm if the land belongs to one of them, but they both spend on it and divide the yield between them. This it's called sharecropping. Now, sharecropping is different from renting the land. Do you understand me? So if he took the land from me, brother, I want to hire the land. Not to do this. So I want to hire the land. Okay, hire the land. So if it's an open contract, I want to maybe make it as a farm. Maybe I want to make it, uh, for example, a car park. I want to make it, whatever. So I'm hiring the land. Whatever he makes a loss into that land or he makes a profit, I'm getting my rent at the end of the month. That's no problem. Father, what is not permissible? What is impermissible? Impermissible forms of sharecropping. It is not allowed to share crop by saying that the owner will receive the yield of a specific portion of the land, while the sharecropper receives the yield of another specific portion which of we, the land. Which we have explained. Handala. Handala ibn Qais narrated from Wafi ibn Khadij, who said, My two uncles told me that during the lifetime of the Prophet wasallam, they used to rent out land and would receive the yield on the banks of the river streams or from a portion of land stipulated by the owner. The Prophet wasallam though prohibited that. I said to Rafi, what if it is for gold or silver coins? He said, there is no harm in renting it out for gold or silver. So there's no harm to rent the land. All and some. A leaf said... So this is full stop, supposed to be. Where is a leaf? Where is a leaf? It's in the same paragraph. It's supposed to be full stop and then it's not a leaf. Because <laughs> you mix it up together, yeah. And Lane said, if the intelligent ones study what has been permitted and what has been forbidden, they would not allow that first mentioned transaction due to the risk involved. Because of the risk. Yes, correct. 
So we said that, um, let's say, for example, I'm going to ask you, this is halal or haram. Let me just see if you understand or not. Okay, he's a farmer. I am the owner of the land. Okay, he's going to, he's going to, uh, do two plants types of, he's going to put barley and wheat, barley and wheat. So I said to him, brother, um, okay, uh, if it's, you're going to put barley and wheat, right. The produce of the barley is mine and the produce of the wheat is yours. Halal or haram? No? Haram, why? There's a risk. There's a risk because the produce of the barley could be a lot and the wheat dies, for example. There's nothing there from the corn, for example. So there's a risk here. Right. Another transaction. Okay, Mr. Farmer, if you want to plant barley, then my share is 70%. And if you want to plant wheat, which is the corn, my share will be 50%. I'll repeat again. If you want to plant barley, my share is 70%. If you want to plant the corn, which produces the wheat, then my share is 50%. Halal haram? Halal? Of course halal. There's no risk. Because I'm saying, if you want to be this, my share is this. Not, not like before. The produce of the corn is mine and the produce of the barley is mine because there's a risk here. We don't know which one is going to be more than the other. Now, Fadl. Amrullah also narrated that he asked Rafi ibn Khadij about renting out land for gold or silver. He replied, there is no harm in that. The people used to rent out land during the time of the Prophet near canals or at the end of streams or for a portion of the fields. What would happen sometimes is that a portion of the produce would be destroyed while another part of the land was fine or vice versa. Thus, there would be no rent for the people. For that reason... No, no. There would be no rent for the people. This is a wrong translation. I've got, I've got a note here. There's no rent for the, trans, the, for the people. There was no other way of renting except this way. There was no other way of making contract except for this way. That's why the Prophet Allah prohibited, which is whatever is grows in this next to the canal is mine, whatever uh, it, it was away from the canal is yours, and whatever, you understand? Whatever is in the eastern side of the land is yours, or whatever the western side of the land. This is the way that was at the time of sharecropping. So there was no sharecropping except for this as a translation. So that is why after that. For that reason. For that reason. See, that's now it makes sense. For that reason, what? They're prohibited. However, there is no harm in renting for something definite and reliable as payment. Right. So, okay. So, definite and reliable. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Right. Now, uh, coming to the musaqa. Tadr. The definition of al musaqa is wherein a person gives another person some trees to attend to, take care of, water, and so on in exchange for half or a specific portion of their yield. So what is the difference between sharecropping and the so-called what? Musaqa. I didn't give you the English translation, is it? <laughs> Musaqa, irrigating water. Musaqa. So what is the difference? The difference is the one that Muzara, sharecropping, talks about the land, and Musaqa, Musaqa talks about the trees. That's all. We want to talk about the land, also about the trees. Now. It's legality. Abdullah ibn Umar stated that the Prophet ﷺ had the people of Khaybar work the fields with each getting half the produce and yields. Abu Hurairah also reported that the Ansar said to the Prophet ﷺ, divide the palm trees between us and our brethren. He said, no. They, the Ansar, then said to the emigrants, look after the trees and share the fruits with us. They said, we hear and we obey. Right. Well, the Ansar, they wanted to give everything to the muhajirun because the prophet uh, he, he had asked them for the help and they helped more than what they were asked and that's why allah Azza wa had praised them in the quran they give preference over themselves even if they are in need so the prophet uh, when he was when he approached by the ansar you know, the land between us and them just give them the land so the Prophet he said, no. The, la, or the, the, the palm tree, you say, between us and them, he said, no. That's too much. 
too much as you being generous. He said, okay, messenger of Allah, then you make your people, Muhajirun, look after the trees, and then we will share you 50% of the crops. Okay? Then you're getting nothing, by the way. They said they're trying to offer, like a, like a sadaqah. So you look up the trees and irrigate it and look after it, and then we will give you 50% of the produce. And they said, okay. Alhamdulillah, so, um, uh, uh, Allah. So, now when they said, they said, means the Ansar said to the Muhajirun, immigrants. And that, that shows that Prophet Sallallahu wanted the Muhajirun to do something in return for what they're getting from the, from the Ansar. I mean, they don't want, Prophet didn't want, for example, take everything on, you know, like nothing, there's no return. Uh, so he wanted the, the Muhajirun to work a bit in order to get what the Ansar is donating and offering them. Bye. I, I am the owner of the trees and he is the farmer and he's looking for the trees and I said, you look up to the tree and I'm giving you 30% of the produce I'm getting 70% and we said this is halal. But we did not put that on the piece of paper. We did not put that pussy piece of paper. And now when we came to the season to cultivate, we forgot. We forgot that we said 70% and 30%. Who's saying we'd be accepted in the eyes of the judge and the Muslim judge? <clears throat> My word as the owner of the tree or his word, which is the farmer? Hmm? I'm always, yeah? Because I'm so high. <laughs> The farmer. Right. First of all, the judge would look at signs to deduce from that who is correct. For example, if I'm a person who always hire my trees, then you would look at my white contracts that had done me before. Actually, brother, I always give any farmer to look after my trees, I give them 70%. And that is the proof, this farmer, this farmer, this farmer. How much did you? 70%. Uh, 30, 70, uh, 70%. 70% is 30%. So the judge will take that. If I don't have that, for example, he, farmer, I can never, I have never give people more than 70, uh, 50%. I want, I'm claiming it's 50%. It's not 70% that is. And then he will go to other, my, my proof is that that person, I looked after his trees and I took 50%, 50%, 50%. If there is not such like this, there's no proof from both sides that the judge takes the word of the owner, whether it's the land or the trees. So you have to be careful as a farmer. Document everything. The judge will take the word of the, the words of the owner of the land or the trees. <clears throat> but Fadl, Ya Reviving dead lands. What time is the, uh, the Salah? 10 o'clock today, yes? Mm. Yes, okay, here we are. Right. Go to the Mountain. Hold on. This refers to lands that are not being cultivated. Reviving the land is wherein a people cultivates a land concerning which he knows of no previous owner. He then waters it or grows crops on it or builds on it, making the land his own, similar to homesteading. So it's dead land. It doesn't mean left like in the middle of the desert or something. You revived it. Okay, so Islam had uh, encouraged such a thing and he gives you the ownership of that. But let's just see. Fadl. Islam encourages this type of action. Aisha radiallahu anha and the rest of the Prophet sallallahu said, said, whoever cultivates land that does not belong to anyone has the most right to it. Allah added, Umar uh, gave that warning during his caliphate. Jabir reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, if someone revives a dead land, it will be for him. He also narrated the Prophet وسلم, said, if anyone surrounds a land with a wall, it belongs to him. Right. From this ahadith, first of all, the leader, the, khalif, the caliphate, the president of a country, if he wishes that he made it as a law that no one is allowed to revive a land, it just goes to the land that belongs to nobody, that he makes it his, he has the right to do so. Which is the most of the countries they have this. 
So for example, even it's a desert, you can't just say that this is mine. Okay? You could benefit as long as there, but the government can come and bye-bye. We don't want you to be here. So you made a very good project for tourism to come in the middle of the desert. You're making money. The government, mm, we want to lick our finger as well. <laughs> want to lick our finger. It's in Arabic. <laughs> so taxation or get you out. Up to them. But in at the time of the Prophet, the time of the Caliphate, Abu Bakr, those lands were so much. So much. Imagine now how much Saudi Arabia being, Arabia Peninsula has uh, you know, buildings and has lands, and people expanded, so many people. At the time of the Prophet, is lots of land which hasn't been invested in. Outside, you know, the cities and lots of them. So that's why the Islam was encouraging that Prophet of Allah, he said, any person who had revived the land by simply just putting a wall in it. And when he says putting a wall, this wall is not just any wall, a wall which according to the of the customs, that it is not easy to climb up. So it's not simple. Well, I made a wall, like, well, I put a brick around this area. A brick in this area, sorry. It has to be proper wall and built in order that you want to take this land in order to maybe to invest into it and, and make a project for yourself. So that is no problem. As long as the government had allowed, you have no problem to do that. And also that this land is not beneficial to all the communities. So if, if, for example, you took a land where there's a spring of water, sorry, my dear, spring of water has to be for everybody. And that's what you work out with Alaf. People are sharing three things. One of them is the water. The other one is, and that's what you work out with Alaf. One of them is the water. The other one is what? Posture, you know, the green land. Posture in the mountains got for grass grazing. And third one, the fire. So any fire means like something that the people can take from big fire. Like so, people are sharing to these things. When I say water, it's not for you to go to the neighbor. Of you. I'm sharing your water because Prophet of Allah he said we are partners in the water. No, this is water is metered. Talking to the water which is from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, like in the springs of water and the wells. Okay, that's the one you share but not the one it, which has been metered and you pay for how many cubic meters that, oh, that's, you can't, nobody can share you. Well, if you want to take money from water from me, I have to pay it. Okay? So that's not the water I'm talking about. So if the person, if he has gone to a stream of water and made a land there, government will accept because there's a benefit for everybody here. You're taking something, you're depriving others the right to be uh, benefiting from that. Wallahu ta'ala alam. By this, alhamdulillah, we finished al Coming to the Ijara now, the Ijara, I'll leave that for next time. Alhamdulillah, we've done, mashallah, very good. Al Ijara, which is renting. We've done some of that renting, but there is more to do with uh, things which is, are as well to do with the Quran, hiring somebody to recite Quran and all of that. If you have any questions, you can go ahead, please go ahead. And also, uh, the ones who are online, please put your hands up if you want to ask a question. Any questions from here? Uh, just a little clarification. Uh, you said about the currency, which is as the value of gold. You cannot exchange it for gold? No, you could purchase the gold with the money, no problem. There's no such thing that, you know, five grams has to be five pounds <laughs> because there's it's nothing here. Because the, the gold is weight and the currency is counting. You don't wait. <laughs> okay. Now, of course. But that shows us as well, you have to buy it straight away. I cannot defer the payment. So I cannot pay 500 for 200 for 520 grams of gold and then pay it later on. Loan. I cannot have credit with that. It has to be on the spot to pay. There's no loans in gold when you buy it with your money. Okay? Or if you buy it for silver, still. So unless you buy gold with food wise, you come on dates or whatever. Nah. Right. Oh, that's Doctor. This last example of the uncultivated land, this is something called squatter's rights. Squatter's rights. Squatter's right. 
So if you, if you find a building that isn't occupied, you can go and take it. As long as you stay there for a period of time, nobody objects, it becomes yours. How many years? So if you, there's, a, there's a place, is this in England though? That's not in our Muslim law. So the England law, so if you have found a house, a building, and you were a house or a building? You can build it's not being used. Nobody objects to it. Mm. Yeah, I've heard this, and I have heard a story about a farmer who did such a thing that he made a building without license. And he had covered it with haystack. And the law says four years, by the way. Four years. So he covered it with haystack. Nobody had seen it. Nobody complained. After four years, it's been disclosed. The neighbors now, they're complaining. The neighbors are too far. Anyway, farmers are from them, but they're complaining. And he said, it's been four years. They said, where is the proof that we've done it four years ago? And that was the issue. Okay, so it's been four years, but four years being hidden, not four years being shown. It has to be what? Seen, not covered and nobody can see it. So the complaint is to be that something there, I could see it, I'm not going to complain. But you're hiding it with haystack and all of that. Lots of haystack. This is a real story, but Google it. Uh, so there was, a, I can't remember the outcome of the court. There's a court here in the army. I'm talking about now 2004, 2005. The question is something... if somebody here can help us as well online regarding the story, please go ahead, Ahmed. Ahmed is not here. Oh, Ahmed is here. Hmm? So that in Islam, if you did that, it's allowed. In Islam, if you did that, in yes. Yeah. yeah, but as long as the government allows it. There's a law, there's a law in America where you can as long as the government allows it. Even in Saudi Arabia. They might allow Saudi Arabia to go invest in the desert, you know, Rub al Khali, because lots of tourism now these days. You take whatever you like there and build your own project or petrol stations or whatever you want to build. Or... But it's talking about private property. Yeah. The buildings, are, they don't belong to them. Yeah, Islam, it's Islamic, as, as long as there is no masla benefit, uh, which has been deprived from other people, they will not, Islam will not allow it in general. So there is no law by the government. You could take whatever you like as long as it does not affect the other people. No problem. It's nothing to do with four years, no complaint, no. But I think, looking at it, this British law, it could be taken from Islam. Yeah, yeah, it's taken from Islam. There are lots of things taken from Islam from the British law. You look at the marriage, there are lots of people from Islam taking it. They take it. And they say in the four months and ten days, as a, as a period for a woman whom her husband died. Why is it four months and ten days? <laughs> So how so they look into these things and because at the end of the day, everybody knows that Islam is the right religion. Now, Father Yazuhan, sorry for the third time I've asked you. Father Linaya Zuhan. If you miss your witter, do you have Islam alaikum? If you miss your witter salah, do you have to do qada? No, there's no such thing. You have you missed the witter, you have to make kaba. There's no such thing because the witter is sunnah, it's not obligatory. But it is if you want to make qadra, if you want to make qadra, I'm sure that the one who makes witter, he likes to make the qadra. The witter is to pray it when you remember it. He who had slept and he did not the witter, and let him pray it when he remembers it. As soon as he remembers it, even if he prayed the fajr, he remembers it, he will do it. Straight away. But if you did not plan to do the witter that night, and you, but then you, you did not plan, and then the following day you said, Oh, I should have done witter. And then, such a case, you pray from the duha prayer, from the duha prayer to compensate your qiyam night. Now. Jazakallah khairan. Naam ya Ahmed. Jazakallah khairan, Shaykh. An imam who recites Wal Akhiratu Khairun wa abqa, Khairun wa abqa, no idgham and no ghunna. Question is, should he be corrected? And if he is corrected, is it after the salah? He should not be corrected. He should not be correct. He should not be corrected. And the salah is hundred percent. 
uh, valid. There's no scholar would say this prayer is invalid. No such thing. And this correction for the drama, that means <laughs> he will be behind the imam, everything. Ghunna, kehang on a second. If prayer is not correct, repeat it again. He doesn't know what is the mistake. Yes, but the mistakes, which is called lahanjali. Only lahanjali. Dhamma, fatha, kasra, yes. And all this, no, not right. Shaykh Al Karim, does he say anything to him after Salah privately? Yeah, does that need a question, yeah, Ahmed? I mean, that, do I say to him yes or no? I mean, this is something to advise. Advise him to, to go. It depends. So I can't say yes to go ahead, depending upon situation. If the Imam is old and you are young, I mean, this is. So I can't give you general the goal. Should you go and tell him? So this is left for the person uh, to, to choose the right time, right place, right uh, person. Some people are not accepted advice for you. He's old and you're young. And you are maybe as well. You can't do the hunna properly. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the person who's advised. Fix your hunna person. Have you, have you got ijazah? Got ijazah maybe. But you don't know. Maybe that person is reading recitation of a different recitation. Yes. If you knew about the qira'at, the term recitation, I don't think it would be correcting because there are uh, things which are to be not known to you as a recital of hafs. Not known. <laughs> so I wouldn't really recommend unless you are yourself knowing the knowledge and then who is the one going to correct? Be careful. If you're in a different masjid like Dabrandi's or Brailwi's, blame nobody except for yourself what happened to you. <laughs> no. But that's not, that doesn't need a question. You don't see how left to the person. Go. But you cannot correct him inside. You ask me inside the prayer. You cannot correct it in the prayer. Behind you, you cannot correct Gunnas. No. <clears throat> exactly. Anybody asking a question here? Um, um, you know, this uh, example you were giving about uh, you know, these shares, where there's a risk that's propagated. If we say take the same principle, if you invest in the area where there's a higher risk, like say you know, bitcoins or any digital, you think that will be prohibited? Okay. The big risk, yeah, Khwari, <coughs> Uh, see, everything has a risk, but the risk is percentage-wise. When you buy watermelon, there's any risk. Maybe the watermelon is stinky from inside. It could be white, could be unsweet, could be rubbish. But that risk is time is accepted. You're buying a house. Isn't there a risk as well that you're going to have? Maybe the foundation is not as good. There's a risk as well. Nobody would buy a house. Brother, before I buy your house, I want to dig around the bases to see them with my own eyes. Oh, dig around the base, that was my collapse. See the risks. So there is risk. You're buying as well nuts, you know, or bizarre, we call it uh, seeds, watermelon seeds. Yeah. You buy them, sometimes you find lots of them rubbish. There's empty. Risk is acceptable as well. So um, if the risk is so much that your heart is attached to it. Could be boom, winner. Boom, loser is halal. Bitcoin, I can't say halal. But I haven't yet met a scholar who fills my eyes, said halal or halal. Because they are, it's in a doubtful area. It's doubtful. Al halal ubayin, al haram ubayin. Halal is clear, haram is clear. So if I said to you, buying cucumber from the shop, sorry, cucumber, cucumber. Okay, buying onion from the shop, halal or haram? Halal, isn't it? 100%. Buying alcohol from the shop, halal or haram? Haram, 100%. See? And when I said to you, buying hyena from the butcher, now it could be halal for you, it could be haram, or it could be a gray area. The person who's knowledgeable, he knows. So if I ask now, the one who's not knowledgeable about this, buying a hyena from the butcher, I'm talking about hyena meat, 
حلال or حرام not the ones who been to my classes تفضل حلال حرام هينا سكافنج يعني حرام 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 دكتور حرام حرام anybody a single person احمد حرام وحلال حلال فند حلال بوتشا حلال فند حلال بوتشا it is halal والله it is halal I know you haven't tasted it. I didn't taste it. Hyena, <laughs> Ikhwan, is halal. Prophet Sallam called it Said, hunt. They used to hunt it at the time of the Prophet Sallam. Allah made it halal, even as a scavenger. It's a hunt. Hadith Jabir, radiallahu anhu. So, I thought we don't have to sorry. buy or sell dogs or cats. I didn't say dogs. I said hyena, Ikhwan. Allahu Akbar. Listen to me. Squirrels like a cat. Yeah, fine. We can <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Allah al Mustan. <laughs> Allah al Mustan. Hyena is halal. No wonder for some of the scholars for this. Halal. I didn't taste it. No, I don't. I don't think but you But Allah made this digestive system in this animal so sophisticated that whatever he eats from the. You know, he eats after the animals, after the lion gets everything, he goes to the. Uh, rotten, decayed, huh? yeah, it's sophisticated. Digestive system filterizes everything. Okay, it's not like the pig. So it's haram. He said from the halal butcher, <laughs> that means they mean slaughtered halal. Well, slaughtered or hunted. Because most of the hyena, you don't slaughter them. There's no such thing. I've got a bar of hyena. Let me come, let me pick up this hyena thing, slaughtered. No, he's always shooting, you know, or arrows. As hunt, it's a hunt. And the Prophet ﷺ made a penalty on this hunt if you do it while you're in a state of haram. So if you're in a state of haram, you're not allowed to hunt or to help somebody to hunt or to have somebody to hunt an animal for you. So he made a penalty of a sheep to be slaughtered in Mecca if you had made this hunt of the hyena. So the people used to eat it. So if I ask you, the dub. The desert lizard. Halal haram. You'd be disgusted, you see. Do you know the desert lizard? It's a big one. Not the not the wazak. The gecko. Not the gecko. Small one. This one you kill it. Okay, you kill it. And you get hundred hazard if you kill it for the first time. Because the one it was to blow fire in Ibrahim alayhi salam. You know the gecko, the small one, lizard. I'm talking about the lizard, not the gecko, which is a big one. It's vegetarian, by the way. It's in the desert. In Saudi Arabia, they eat it day and days, every day. Yes. That's called lizard. I have seen it with my own eyes. I didn't eat it. I went to my freezer. I should show you our freezer at the house. Because my brother eats it. And then I remember, and it was in the frozen. And it's a mini crocodile. <laughs> Wallahi. It's a crocodile, but it's... <laughs> I lifted it up, you know, the, 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 the tail of it is like the crocodile, it's tough and rough. It's like this. Oh, how can I eat it? Put it back in the freezer. But I've seen them, they eat it, and they're so nice for them. One friend of mine, who is, comes from the same background, he said, I've eaten it without me knowing. I was with the people, and it was white meat. And I was eating, eating. He's a Palestinian, like me. And then he said, العكرة is the tail. It's coming in the middle. That's when he was shocked. I see the akra. What is this? And they told him it's dumb. But he has eaten it now. Uh, but now his mind's playing around with it. It's disgusting. But it was okay before. SubhanAllah. Prophet Salah did not eat it. And he didn't like it. He didn't like, he didn't like to eat it. Because it was given to him. In the house of Maimuna. And Khalid is related to her. Radiallahu anh. So when it's being given to him. Maimuna she said. Aren't you going to tell the Prophet what he's eating? So the Prophet is about to eat. Messenger of Allah is a dumb. Took his hands off. Khalid he said. Is it haram? He said no no. But we don't find it in our homeland. I mean in Mecca. We didn't used to eat it. This is in the desert of Medina. But not in Mecca. Mecca is a mountains. They don't find in our people. 
So Khalid pulled the plate and started eating from it. And the Prophet of Allah is looking at him. It's like, how can you look eat that? But it's halal. He was eating it and he was looking at it. رضي الله عنهم وارضاهم صلى الله على سيدنا محمد على آله وصحبه وسلم stop now سبحانك اللهم بحمدك شهد الله تصفرك وأتوب عليك